Burkina Faso's new leader says former junta leader Paul Henry Damibo was relieved of his duties because he failed to quell jihadist attacks against the West African nation and adds that the military will be in charge amid a pending national forum that will choose a president. Captain Ibrahim Traoré, who took over Burkina Faso on September 30, 2022 through a coup, becoming Burkina Faso's new president and the youngest state leader in the world, has been doing a lot for his nation Burkina Faso. His actions since his rise to power have not gone unnoticed by anyone. Leaders of Burkina Faso's two coups in 2022 both cited insecurity and various forms of misgovernance as reasons for their military takeovers. Both promised to restore constitutional order by June 2024, as agreed in the economic community of West African states. He calls coordinated transitional framework. The country's military leader, Captain Ibrahim Traoré, had promised a return to democracy with presidential elections by July 2024 when he came to power. The updated 14 October 2022 transitional roadmaps set out four main objectives for the new regime. Ibrahim Traoré's first commitment was to fight terrorism and restore the country's territorial integrity. The government reorganized the defense and security forces, acquired new military equipment, and recruited about 10,000 army and navy officials. He went ahead to hire about 90,000 volunteers for the defense of the homeland. This move received mixed responses from the army and the public due to concerns over their training, supervision, and long-term prospects, all of which could worsen insecurity. The government also created the Patriotic Support Fund to boost citizen engagement with security efforts. Another of Traoré's commitments was to deal with the country's humanitarian crisis. With nearly 2 million people internally displaced and over 36,000 refugees, Burkina Faso needs about $877 million to provide essential aid, shelter, healthcare, and support. But the funding gap remains with dire consequences for those in need. Regarding the goal of rebuilding the state and improving governance, the junta passed important new legislation targeting clientelism and political patronage in the public service. Anti-corruption efforts led to the arrest of Vincent Debogu, former transport minister, and four others who received 11-year prison sentences for embezzlement and money laundering. The last of Traoré's pledges was to supervise the holding of elections to restore constitutional and democratic rule come July 2024. With barely three months until the end of the transition, there's a lack of urgency on the case. In a state TV interview last September, Ibrahim Traoré said his priority was addressing insecurity and safeguarding the nation, not elections. Referring to the elections, he told reporters, it's not a priority. I'll tell you that clearly, it's security that's the priority in a country plagued by jihadist violence. This raised concerns among political parties that polls would be delayed, especially since the technical preparations haven't started. The poor security situation could also offer a pretext to postpone the elections indefinitely. Captain Ibrahim Traoré, since his rise to power, has not stopped making moves to better his nation and free them from the pressure of the West. He has a bold vision for Burkina Faso, aspiring to see a prosperous, stable, and united Burkina Faso where every citizen has the opportunity to realize their full potential. To achieve this, the captain has a few key elements in mind. Captain Traoré aims to boost Burkina Faso's economic growth by investing in agriculture, industry, infrastructure, and education creating jobs, reducing poverty, and improving the living conditions of the Burkina population. Ibrahim Traoré considers security a top priority. He is committed to resolutely combating terrorism and insecurity that have plagued certain regions of Burkina Faso. To achieve this, he promotes a comprehensive security approach involving enhanced regional cooperation and the development of intelligence capabilities. As mentioned, Ibrahim Traoré considers security a top priority. 
He is committed to resolutely combating terrorism and insecurity that have plagued certain regions of Burkina Faso. To achieve this, he promotes a comprehensive security approach involving enhanced regional cooperation and the development of intelligence capabilities. Ibrahim Trahore is committed to promoting transparency, accountability, and good governance. He wants to strengthen democratic institutions, combat corruption, and ensure the active participation of civil society in decision-making processes. Thing which led to the arrest of former transport minister, Vincent Dabilgu, and four others. When it comes to education and healthcare, the captain understands that education and healthcare are pillars of human development. He plans to make substantial investments in these sectors to ensure equitable access to quality education and adequate healthcare services for all Burkina Bays. For Ibrahim Trahore, national unity is essential. He seeks to bring together the different ethnicities, religious groups, and regions of Burkina Faso by fostering dialogue, mutual respect, and tolerance. As promised, President Ibrahim Trahore was committed to fighting terrorism and respecting ECOWA's transition timetable. But Burkina Faso, along with neighbors Mali and Niger, have given notice of their immediate withdrawal from ECOWA's. That decision adds to doubts about Burkina Faso's ability to meet its transition deadlines. Burkina Faso has strengthened its political and military cooperation with Mali and Niger. Although, as the ECOWA's withdrawal shows, this has come at the expense of stronger regional, and in some cases, international ties. Suggesting that more changes may occur coming from him, the junta leader mentioned that things were unfolding and that more changes were incoming, not just about currency, but they envisioned breaking all ties that kept them in slavery. Captain Ibrahim Trahore also clarified that Burkina Faso has no plans to rejoin Nikoas, saying their move was an irreversible one. To justify their exit from the economic community of West Africa, the three countries, now collectively known as the Alliance of Sahel States, AS, accused the regional organization of not assisting them against jihadists and deviating from the ideals of its founding fathers and pan-Africanism. This alliance gives them political cover and support in the face of growing pressure from ECOWAS and other regional institutions to comply with their transition deadlines. The Alliance of Sahel States AS, held its inaugural ministerial summit on November 25, 2023, in the Merlion capital, and 18 recommendations were adopted to lay the foundations for genuine integration within the new alliance. These include improving the free movement of goods and people, establishing a food security mechanism, and formulating a common industrialization strategy. A joint statement issued at the end of the summit also recommended the formation of an expert committee to explore the possibility of an economic and monetary union, as well as the creation of a common stabilization fund and investment bank. Foreign ministers of the three Sahelian states also proposed the establishment of a confederation. Burkina Faso's ECOWA's withdrawal adds to fears of not keeping his promise of restoring constitutional and democratic rule considering that the election deadline was agreed with the regional body. For the military leader, the security and well-being of the Burkina population reign supreme, even if this entails postponing the initially envisaged military transition slated for July 2024. He emphasized, while we hold hope for the eventual conduct of elections, such a process must not be confined to Owaga and Bobo alone. Every Burkina Bay must have the opportunity to exercise their choice in the selection of their president. Consequently, presidential elections, as a matter of priority, yield precedence to our imperative of ensuring security. Captain Ibrahim Trahore acknowledges the challenges inherited by his administration, particularly in the realm of national security. He remarked, organizationally, in terms of personnel and armament, our armed forces were sorely lacking. We were ill-prepared for armed conflict, possessing inadequate equipment and an ineffective communication infrastructure. The entire military possessed less than 200 Kalashnikov rifles, 
our vulnerability was palpable. Presently, our capabilities have grown exponentially. It is also worrying that political parties complain about a lack of dialogue and have called for an end to the suspension of their activities. Civil society has denounced the repressive use of the April 2023 General Mobilization Act, and several of its representatives who criticize the government's security choices have been forced to join the volunteers for the defense of the homeland. There are also allegations of abuses by defense force members, which the authorities deny. The government says it is controlling communication as part of its measures to defeat jihadist groups. But the authorities shouldn't ignore calls for a more consensual approach that protects civilians, especially when national cohesion is vital for security and durable state governance. Beyond these concerns, the country has drawn further away from former international allies. Although Trahare has maintained a veil of secrecy over his alliances, the steady increase in Russian soldiers on missions, the landing of Russian aircraft, and a visit to the Kremlin in July 2023 suggest new links with Russia. Captain Ibrahim Trahare shocked everyone with another move, constructing a gold refinery. He recently launched the construction of the country's first refinery for gold, Burkina's main mineral resource. Burkina Faso's president, Ibrahim Trahare, laid the foundation stone for a national gold refinery on November 23, 2023. With an annual refining capacity of 150 tons, the facility, whose total cost has not been disclosed, will produce its first gold 11 months from now. The inauguration of the facility was held in the Kosodo Industrial Zone, just east of the capital Ouagadougou. The refinery will have a production capacity of around 400 kilograms, 880 pounds, of gold per day. There's no longer any question of us taking our gold abroad for refining. We'll refine it on site because we know the real content of the raw gold that comes out. That's very important, Burkina Faso's military leader Captain Ibrahim Trahari said at a launch ceremony in the capital Ouagadougou. Burkina Faso will thereby refine gold domestically, hence not exporting unrefined gold at lower prices. This greatly increases state revenue. For some time now, gold has been Burkina's leading export product, but we have no control over gold. Today we have decided to put a whole network in place, the captain added. The mining sector accounts for 14.3% of Burkina's state revenue, according to data from the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, ET. However, gold production in the country fell from 66.8 tons in 2021 to 57.6 tons in 2022, marking a 13.7% drop. He mentioned that the machines were entirely built in Burkina Faso. I can confirm without fear of contradiction that Burkina Faso is the second country in Africa to develop this technology, said Ibrahim Traoré, who saluted what he termed the ingenuity of this Burkina Bay revolution. Ibrahim Traoré mentioned that the opening of the factory was all part of his regime's bid to have the country manage its resources. He invited other African states to bring their mining waste to Burkina Faso, because we have the technology to process. Local experts developed the plant to process residue from the country's gold mines, said Jochim Murray Emmanuel Tapsoba, chief executive officer of Golden Hand, the company that operates the plant intending to extract metals from the residues. The establishment of the plant is designed to allow Burkina Faso to process on site and have full control of the waste. In February 2024, Ibrahim Trahare ordered the suspension of the issuance of export permits for small-scale private gold production. This move was reportedly aimed at tackling illicit trade and cleaning up the artisanal gold sector. Illicit trade involves smuggling gold out of the country, avoiding taxes, and bypassing regulations. This suspension aims to crack down on such activities and ensure that exported gold is properly documented and contributes to government revenue. The government hopes this suspension will establish a more formal and accountable system for exporting small-scale gold. 
This move by President Ibrahim Traoré will restructure the gold refinery to support equitable distribution of wealth, giving direct and indirect job opportunities to the people of Burkina Faso. The idea of the country's gold refinery is to refine domestic production of the country's leading export in the country rather than abroad. By doing this, state revenue increases. This move will significantly destabilize Europe's gold market if other African countries engage in building their gold refinery. Despite Europe's vast gold reserve, it lacks its gold mining operations forcing it to rely heavily on imports primarily from Africa. So if this continues, Europe's gold market will significantly drop. All these moves by President Ibrahim Traoré signifies Burkina Faso fighting to reclaim control over its resources. The captain has many ideas and will be on the lookout for what next he comes up with.